What's up, y'all? This is Common. You got the Russell right here. It's DJ MV. Oh, it's Ghostface. Are you checking out the beat with R.B. Melba? The beat, baby. We about to light one up for free. You know why? Because he speak English. The whole Wu-Tang is behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Bong, bong, bong. Yeah. And this is the beat. Welcome to The Beat. We are coming to you from Brooklyn, New York at the Brooklyn Museum with Yasin Bey. Thanks for sitting down with me. No worries. How are you, man? I'm Thanks great. Uh, I'm a big fan. Oh, I just thing. walked through your new work. Tell us about it. This installation is uh, of a set of artworks in a recording called Negus. It's a, a blend of uh, new musical compositions, newly released musical compositions, uh, as well as visual arts, some of my own, others that I've done in collaboration. Myself and Jose Parla, uh, Julie Murray too, we're very grateful to have a part of the show. The aim was to create an experience similar to uh, opera or uh, theater, utilizing technology, but also creating uh, a space where there was a focused listening experience that's just a hearing experience. This is different. This is you saying we're doing something that's like high art, or you go in there, this is not on Spotify, right? No, this is not no, out no, even no. at a record store. No. Uh, why that choice? Uh, always been an admirer of, you know, art, great artists, uh, uh, Jean Michel, clearly, or uh, uh, Ellen Gallagher, and um, also, you know, create music. So, uh, my proposal, so to speak, is that uh, art is not just, or fine art, uh, to use a phrase, is not limited or restricted solely to what you can hang on a wall or uh, that it includes music as well. I had a, a strong feeling that it needed to be a more dynamic experience than simply downloading it from, you know, a device um, and it's, it's, a, it's a meditative, reflective sort of experience. Tell me about some of the themes. There's the theme of blackness, of royalty. In one of the songs from the new piece, uh, you talk about truth unchanged, uh, treasure in an unlocked safe, an unmarked grave. What, what's that all about? The facts are in flux, however, the truth is unchanged. Observations from my, my perspective about uh, constant cosmic situation that we all find ourselves in. Writing for me in that way is um, it's a discovery. So things that I know or have seen or just, just feel good and natural for me to say or express, they just they come out in these very uh, dynamic, interesting ways. And it's been close to five years. I mean, it'll be four years this year since the original recordings and uh, this presentation. And did you know when you were making the music you wanted to be in this visual experience? I, I needed, I, I had a, a strong feeling that it needed to be a more dynamic experience than simply downloading it from, you know, a device sort of antithetical to the, the prevailing attitudes or practices in that space, uh, you know, specifically now. And, um, and do you like that idea because Music started with something very personal, right? Around the campfire with the family, then a larger gathering, but you had to come and see it and pay attention. Yeah. It's relatively recent that we have first mass distribution and now right, right, digital right, distribution. Right, right. And you're, you're on this pushing against that. I'm not necessarily pushing against it. I mean, I think it, has, it certainly has its benefits. Um, I think a balanced approach to, to anything um, uh, it is best. Uh, there's great advances uh, and advantages from, mm. you know, the technological world, particularly as it relates to, you know, the distribution of information, which is what, you know, the culture is, it's, you know. Yeah, you're right. So let me flip it. It's not that you're pushing against it. It's more that you're saying just because we have these new digital platforms doesn't mean that should now be the only way we do music. And, and, or, I mean, or form community or, you know, have experiences mm. or share, share ideas. Um, this, is, this is a proposal about how to interact and experience ideas, information, 
And these are just a group of ideas or feelings or sentiments framed in a particular way in, in, in a time and space. Mm. And that the premium is on the now, you know, you, 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 you're not just staring at something and walking, you know, there's layers to it, you're gazing at it. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a meditative, reflective sort of experience. And hip hop didn't start with someone sitting alone looking at a laptop. It started with people in the community. In the community, but it's also it's got a solitary element to it. But it's it's, it's kind of be even beyond like hip hop. It's mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, it's uh, hip hop is a a continuum of, uh, you know, we're all a continuum. You know, so the different categories are you know they they apply to a certain degree, but there's there's something else more essential than that. The exhibit mentions the 20th anniversary of Black on both sides. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel that album holds up in your mind? It's a great record to me. I mean, it changed so much for me. I it's a, one of the greatest things in my life. And I'm glad that they're still interested in it and people are still appreciated and feel like it's worth their time. So I'm, I'm uh, really grateful. Can I tell you something I love about it? Because I, I got some notes on it here. Okay. Uh, I've been listening to that record a couple of decades now. <laughs> you have things that were true then, so they were true. But they also were ahead of the curve of the conversation. Can I read a little uh, mathematics? Okay. Or do you want to read? I the way you can read this one. Uh, it's a numbers game, but shit don't add up somehow. Like I got 16 to 32 bars to rock it, but only 15% of profits ever see my pockets. 16 ounces to a pound, 20 more to a key a five minute sentence hearing, and you're no longer free. Here's some observations there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now you got mainstream, you even have some Republicans saying, yeah, five minutes, years taken out of people's lives, we gotta, mm. we gotta revise this. Uh, yeah, you know, definitely was commenting and remarking on the world that I saw around me from, uh, I think, a fairly unique, sharp perspective. Growing up in New York City, I got access to a lot of powerful vibrations and some stark realities as well, you know, a uh, very singular type of experience, to say the least. You mentioned the, the crack era, what you grew up in New York, what your music did. A lot of your tracks over time also deal with fear. That lyric about spending so much on defense and America still lives in fear. Uh, fear of blackness, fear of black men. Uh, but people growing up in marginalized communities also having a lot to be afraid of. Uh, why is that such a recurring theme for you, and is that a theme at all in, in this work? Um, well, I mean, I talk about life. I mean, there's a lot of themes that I think that come up. I don't think fear is necessarily a recurring theme. Love is certainly is. Or, uh... Well, I mean, maybe you talk about overcoming fear? Certainly, you know, I mean, and yeah, I mean, we grew up in a tense environments, uh, but there's so much beauty in life every day. And uh, after so much work that I've done and life that I've been fortunate enough to live, at this point in my life and my career, my observation is that the cosmic situation is far greater than the poverty or wealth of nations. Mm. to quote uh, a song that I wrote some while ago. And that's to say that, the, you know, the seats of power change, seats of influence change, and the facts are in flux, but the truth is unchanged. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that, uh, well, to quote Einstein, you can behave as if nothing is a miracle, you, you can behave as if everything is. And I'm mm. more on the everything is side of things personally. Uh, I just see so much opportunity and beauty in the world and an opportunity to express it. I'm just really encouraged. The, the darker elements, the, you know, the shadows, if you, so to speak, are always present, you know, but um, you know, the, light, the light is not afraid of the dark, mm. so to speak. And you say that at a time when a lot of people in America are, are obviously dispirited about leadership and government, politics. And do not be dismayed. You know, you, you are here. 
Uh, so there's an opportunity to do something beautiful today. So be great today. As great as you can, you know, personal best. You know, be uh, as that it says in the poem, the desiderata, be cheerful, strive to be happy. And it's, 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 it, you know, life, you know, you know, that old life, life is what you make it. So darling, my dear, try and make it. I know that you can, and, and we do. I mean, you know, my favorite band, the human beings, you know, surviving and thriving and, and ever-changing and challenging times all the time, every mm. day, somewhere. So, yeah, in support of that and that vibration, you know, we're doing the works that we do now. I also want to ask you, you have a good relationship with Dave Chappelle. Mm. You know, you guys have something in common, I think. Yes. You tell me, and then I'll tell and you. We're, we're born in the same year. Oh, sure. yeah? Yeah. And so you feel like you of the same real generational experience? For sure. I mean, yeah. but, I mean he's, my, you know, he's my best friend. He's yeah. like one of my dearest friends for life. So it's, it's another type of bond between me and that guy. So I only have the, out, you know closer, to, I only have the outside observer as, mm. a, as a listener, a fan. You guys both take something that is America's original sin, racism, and you deal with it in different ways, including humor, mm. which is weird because this is a heavy thing. And I'm thinking about a, another song of yours that really holds up. Uh, I'm only going to say it a certain way, but Mr. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. N-word. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. So, Mr. N-word. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, I'm like, what is it, Neutrogena? <laughs> <laughs> so. So I brought these lyrics too because they hold up. Oh yeah. I'm only, I'm only doing them a certain way. All right. You have rap genius over here. Yeah. Let me see what you got. You want, or you can do it. You want to do it? Okay. This is incredible stuff. Um. Okay. The actions reveal how their hearts really feel. Like late night, I'm on a first class flight. The only brother in sight to fight the tendons catch fright. I sit down in my seat to see she approaches efficiently, talking about excuse me. Her lips curl up into a tight space because she don't believe that I'm in the right place. Show up my board and pass, then she saw the gas on the barrels, put an extra lime on my water glass. Uh, an hour later, here she come by walking past. I hate to be a pest, but my son will love your autograph. Yeah, that's pretty funny. It's based on actual experiences. But you know, it, it, it's very interesting. It's a quote from a, from a childhood friend of mine. It says, black, it's white, it's money. It's all unequal. The adjectives can never be nouns. We are the people. Because you stay in the, people try to keep you in that box even when you transcend. And if I know what your genealogy is or where you're from, I know something about you, mm -hmm. but I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And I can't pretend to know a person just because I know something about them or reduce them to just like a set of like scientific uh, responses. And it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, someone's skin color, it's like people saying they know people with acne are bad people. Or like, you know, or people, you know, it's just, it's so bizarro, um, but it's, it predominates in the way that so many things are done. And in the song, you take us along with these incidents that are funny and that might be even less threatening to some listeners, maybe some white listeners who say, how bad can it be for the rich international rapper, the character in the song? And you uh -huh. go, well, actually, a bunch of it sounds really bad. Yeah, yeah, that happens. We're human beings, you know? I mean, it seems like being a racist is really uh, labor intensive and just kind of draining, you know what I mean? <laughs> not, draining? Not, yeah, not very rewarding. Uh, I don't see a lot of joyous racists, you know what I'm saying? Or like, hey, let's go hate today. <laughs> it's just, they're not right. Even, even when they have the tiki torches, they don't yeah, seem they just don't really seem like they're generally uplifted. having a yeah. really good time. Yeah. Um, well, you know, they say that's the difference between if you're ever at the, like, at the hardware store, mm. if someone's getting like four tiki torches, mm. that's a dinner party. <laughs> but if they're, you see them buying like 20 tiki torches, that's like an anti-Semitic, anti-black oh, yeah, yeah, hate yeah, rally. Yeah, yeah. They're sad. They're just sad. That's how you know. Like, if it's too many. It's too many torches. <laughs> What are you guys up to? <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing later? Before we close out mm. this conversation, obviously, because mm. we're going to put this up for everybody, I got to right ask on. you, Super. are you listening to any 
other musicians today? Are there any rappers catching your ear? You have a very distinguished ear. You don't listen to everything. Oh, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I love so many, so many people. I mean, Earl Sweatshirt, always uh, Blue, Mackham. Yeah, I got a. It's a. It's Kendrick, JPEG it's, Mafia, of course. Kendrick, Kendrick is a shout out in there. Kendrick, of course. Kelsey Lou, um, Blood Orange. This is a lot of old stuff too. Emma, Emma Hoy, Miriam, the pianist. Uh, it's a lot of stuff out there. Kong Ben, you know, Robert Glasper. It's great. It's a lot of great, you know, vibrations out these days. And classic stuff too, all the time is inspiring. I've been a lot of Ethiopian these days. You know, solo piano, UB Blake, uh, Tony Williams, Lifetime. Great. Uh, Yassine Bey at the Brooklyn Museum. Thank it's you. Pleasure, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm Ari Melber. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Joe, and this is The Beat. And you can find this segment and more of our work at msnbc.com slash The Beat.